Hello my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we have this really cute cutting board that I need to rescue. It has some cracks on the edges. It's almost broken all the way through. If it wasn't stapled it would probably be broken. So I want to try and save this cute little cutting board decor. It's not really a cutting board. It's just made of fiberboard. Um, so it's pretty flimsy. So I'm going to take these popsicle sticks and cut them down and just glue them on to kind of sturdy up those corners on that little cutting board. Now I could probably just take the chicken off the front of that and just toss the rest of it and not try and save this at all. But I think it can be saved. I think we can do a little something to it. It's going to be very simple and sometimes less is more and I think that's all it's going to need is a little reinforcement in the back and then I think it needs to be dressed up in the front just a little bit. So I found some material that I haven't used in a while and I think I'm going to use that in the front. So now that that's on there and dry I need to dress up the front and cover up those little cracks that are in those corners and I think this piece of material is going to do that. This is just homespun material from I believe probably Hobby Lobby. I usually get a yard or two at a time. And so I just made a regular little shoestring bow, wrapped it around there and covered up those cracks and tied that down and then I also glued it down really well so that it would stay and look nice. Uh, it seemed to want to twist on me a little bit there. So then once that is done I just take a little rusty star and put it in the middle and that's all that it needs. I got these two t signs from my friend Tracy. She sent these to me in a box uh, a while ago and they're from Job Lots or Big Lots for I think it looks like the tag said seven dollars on them. So um, I decided I was going to take them apart and take all the metal off the front and the staples except for the edges, the, the ruffled edges. I'm going to leave them on there and I'm going to paint the whole thing black. So I did one coat on these boards. That's all it really needs with this folk art black paint. It's very pigmented so it's, it covers very nicely. I'm also going to be doing another coat on top of it so it's going to have a second coat of a different color. So I was careful not to get it on the metal pieces and then I decided I kind of liked it uh, just a little bit distressed over the top so I was cleaning it off uh, really well and trying to keep the black paint off there but then as I saw it I getting it on and all around the edges I was like you know what this looks fine so I'm gonna flip them over once it's dry and I'm gonna take my popsicle sticks and glue these on so that the two signs will stay together um, this works really well with some hot glue or you could use wood glue as well. If you use the wood glue you would have to wait for a while for it to to hold whereas the hot glue holds immediately and it stays together very well. So I used four of those and then I broke down another one just for the middle and had it go the other direction just to give it a little more stability. And now I'm going to take a coat of Mod Podge and go over the top. I'm going to do a crackle paint over the top of this. So you take Mod Podge or uh, a school glue from Dollar Tree if you want to. That would work as well. And you just put a coat of the glue or Mod Podge over the top of your piece. So once I have that all covered, I'm taking mushroom paint, or it's mushroom color in the folk art uh, farmhouse paint, and I am just going to do a coat all over the top of this Mod Podge. 
I did not let this dry at all or anything like that. It's still wet. It's almost immediately after I put it on. Now the way I'm doing this, I'm not going to get a lot of crackle from this. You want to do it really thick if you want some really big thick crackles. Um, and this is not super thick. So it's not going to be, they'll be probably skinny, small crackle pieces that'll go through. And so the Mod Podge will dry clear and the paint will come through the crackle part. Now it's up to you. You could leave this to sit and dry on its own and it would crackle on its own. I always love to watch it while it's working. So I use my heat gun and I'll just dry it for a little while and just see all the the cracks come through as it dries. And as you can see there's small little cracks all over the paint and you can see the black that's coming through. So now that it's all dry I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper and go over it lightly and just kind of uh, sand down some of the bumps and see if I can get any more of that black paint to come through. Just widen out some of those cracks a little bit. Just help distress it a little bit. I have this metal rooster. I've had this in my stash for quite a while. Don't know where I got that, but um, I'm going to take some black paint and go around the edges so that it pops along the top of that crackle paint and kind of plays off the black that's in the background. And I'm just going to go all over the edge, all the way around. I'm also hitting the edges on the sign as well. I'm just going to give it a little bit more black uh, than what I had gotten on it before. I painted the back black and I'm adding a twine rope hanger on the back. Filling in on the sign with some moss that is going to go underneath my chicken to make it pop a little bit more. I think it gives it some dimension and I really like it. So I'm just going over it with some hot glue and sticking that down. Now I wanted to let you guys know that I will have the products that are on this video on my Etsy shop along with a few other items that I have. So I have added a few new things on there. Once that is on, I'm just feeling out how the chicken is going to look and then having some pit berries down around the bottom. So I decided I'm going to do it like this and glue it right down nicely and give a little trim, of course, to the moss, always giving it a little haircut. So I'm gluing down this, these little pit berries that I have. I made kind of a swag with them, and it has one of them has like a rusty star that I'm going to just pull down over the top of this bow. I just used some gingham, uh, burgundy, and white ribbon, and I made it into like a shoestring bow. I'm just going to glue that down. And I just pull over that star that was part of one of the pit berries and glue that down on there to add an extra little touch. And then just fluffing the berries and getting them where I want them to be. I got these three little palettes from Dollar Tree a while ago and I've had them kicking around in my stash and decided that I wanted to do something with them. So I'm going to just remove the uh, stickers that are on the back. I use a, my heat gun and that heats up the glue a little bit and it's easier to pull it off and you don't have a bunch of paper or sticker left behind. It comes right off pretty easily. Then I'm going to grab some stain and I'm going to stain all three of these front and back. I'm going to try to get down into the grooves a little bit as well. It's not completely necessary but I think it would look really nice if it was all nice and covered. 
And then once it's covered, I just wipe it back a little bit and it gives it a nice brown rich look. Once I have them all stained and dry, I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper and go over them around the edges and in between the slats the best that I can. It's not, again, not completely necessary to do it at this step because I will be doing it again later on, but I think it does help later on with some of the distressing. I have this sunflower and greenery border or wall decor that you can get from uh, Dollar Tree as well. It's a removable adhesive stick and uh, because it's removable I decided I was going to use some Mod Podge to glue this down onto my little palette. So just give it a good coat all over. Now I'm just going to peel back a little bit of this peel and stick off the backing and stick it onto my palette. Just make sure all the bubbles are out of it and that it's down all the way to the bottom. And then I just trim off with my scissors the edge so that I can reuse the rest of the peel and stick. So I'm just rubbing that out and then I'm going to uh, peel off a sunflower that's uh, separate on there. It's on the same uh, peel and stick but it's kind of separate. So I added that to my little palette. The more sunflowers the better for me. I think they're so pretty. So then I'm just going to go over it with the Mod Podge to make sure it's sealed down nicely and then I will set it aside and work on the next one and then the next one while they dry. These came out really pretty. I love the contrast of the stain and the green behind it. So on the left hand side is one that I sanded down and cut between the slats, which is what I'm going to do to these other ones as well. So we're just going to cut down between the slats and get rid of that extra peel and stick that's on there so that you can tell that it's a palette. And I'm going to do that to both of those and then I'll go over it with some sandpaper and sand it back and give it some distressed look. So this is why I said you didn't have to uh, sand those down beforehand if you didn't want to because it will be covered up and then you'll just go over it with the sandpaper again. Now of course you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I wanted to make this look old and I found that it almost looked like it was hand painted once I sanded it down. It kind of blended the colors a lot more and I really liked how uh, it just muted the colors together a little bit. So now I'm going to take some my twine of my twine rope and a couple of popsicle sticks and space use them as spacers and we're going to put a hanger and connect them all on the back. Now I have this clay piece that says fall that I made and I'm going to show you how I did that. I got this new piece called um, well I don't it's they're just cookie stamps letters numbers and symbols and you actually pull them apart and you can make any words that you want to and you can use them in cookies but I thought I would try them and use them in my clay. So I got this off Amazon. There'll be a link down in the description if you're interested in checking them out. Now this is going to be my first time using them, so be gentle with me. I'm just trying these out. They come with little bags, so once you pull your pieces off, you can pop them in that bag so you don't miss or lose any. And they just come all connected. They're all capital letters that I found, and there are uh, numbers and symbols there as well. So I'm just going to take some clay, flatten it out the best that I can, and then I'm making, this one's going to say happy because the other one says fall, 
and I'm just pressing down a little bit and you want to make sure your letters aren't too close together because it will squish the ones next to it. So you do want to space them out a little bit. It also makes it easier because I went in with a black, uh, some black paint with a small paintbrush and made my letters black as you can see in the fall uh, little sign there. It's green on top but then um, I went down in there with black and colored it in to make it pop. So you could use whatever you want. I had scissors right handy. I'm just uh, squaring off this little piece of clay and making it um, try to make all the sides even and the best that I can and just kind of straighten them out and squish them together. So I painted it with some moss paint because I want the green and then like I said there's my little um, tiny paintbrush and it goes right in those cracks really well and I can almost color in pretty easily those letters to make them pop. Now you could do, if you did this, you could do whatever color you want to. I did happen to get some over the top and I just took, once it was dry, I would take my green paint and go over the top of that and it would get rid of any of the black that would come through. I'm just taking some moss and putting it over where I'm going to put my little uh, my little clay piece that says happy and I'm going to glue that over the top of my moss. That just to make it pop a little bit. And then I'm also taking some twine and going around each little sign, going around wrapping it and then I'm making a little shoestring bow just to give it some more interest. And I think this came out pretty cute. It's different and these little letters I'm gonna have to play with a little bit but they were, they were pretty fun. I think there's a lot of potential in them. I hope you like my projects today. Leave me a comment below if you have a favorite. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Take care.